Well, it was good to get back to practice today. I think the players were excited about it. We've had a, you know, good first day. Um, energy and enthusiasm was good. Obviously, if we were where we needed to be, we wouldn't need to have a whole bunch of more practices before the first game. So I think every player's got to self-assess a little bit in terms of the things that they need to work on to improve and uh, also be ready to take constructive criticism from the coaches so that they, they have a chance to use that input and teaching to you know, help them improve. So uh, we're certainly looking forward to the challenges of the season. Uh, there are many, many out there, including the first game. And uh, I think that what's really important is our players have to believe that we determine the outcome of the game by what we do, how we practice, how we prepare, how we get ready to play the game, and how we can go execute in the game and the thing that you have to do to be able to do that is develop the right habits when it comes to work, work ethic, perseverance, discipline uh, to make the right choices and decisions, uh, mental and physical toughness to be able to sustain. Uh, and these things are all important because I think this team, like every team, has to reestablish the identity of who this team is going to be. Uh, and I don't think that that's anybody's call to make. Uh, including any preseason poll, uh, which basically means little to nothing uh, about anything. Uh, it's all about how you play when the game comes against the competition that you have to play against. Uh, so we're not going to be in the mood to uh, be making comparisons or making comments on rankings. It's flattering that you know people think highly of our team, uh, but our team needs to understand that uh, they have to prove who they are by what they do, uh, and this means you know very very little. Uh, on the Deshaun Hand situation, you know first of all we have every respect for the police uh, and what they did, uh, and and. Uh, so in no way is, are my comments directed at anything but total respect uh, for those people doing their job. Um, you know, Deshaun put himself in a bad situation, obviously made a mistake being where he was at the time. Um, but the fact that he didn't drive the car, all right, which is, you know, what we tell the players not to do. Um, it's not okay that he was drinking uh, with me. Um, and that's a behavioral issue that needs to be addressed, and we will address it. Uh, but the fact that he didn't drive the car and wasn't driving the car, he did not put other people at risk, which to me is the most significant uh, thing um, when you drive under the influence. But he didn't drive. But they had every right to do what they did. So what we basically did is I have two choices. I can punish the guy for uh, making a putting himself in a bad situation, all right, but making a pretty good decision after he put himself in that situation, or we can take the situation that he put himself in, which was drinking, uh, and have him assess for that and try to help him uh, so that he can make better choices and decisions in the future. All right, so rather than worry about the punishment part of it, uh, we put him in 48-hour inpatient uh, for assessment purposes. Professional people assess what he needs to do, what we need to do with him, and that's what we will do with him. Because he put himself in that situation, we'll give him community service and uh, police ride around and some different things to help him. And if he does everything he's supposed to do, uh, he will not get he he will not be suspended. Um, because I think what we're doing is helping the player. Uh, and I think the fact that uh, if he had drove the car, it would be a totally different circumstance. And even if he didn't get arrested, even if he didn't get arrested, and he put himself in that situation at 4.30 in the morning being in that condition, we would have sent him to do the same thing for his future safety and his future decision making. All right, so that the arrest part of it has nothing to do with that. We're treating these things as two different things. And um, that's all really I have you know, to say you know, about that. So uh, it's important, I think, for especially young players to really be focused here in the next, you know, few days. These first five days, acclimation days, are heavy install days. Very critical to young players being able to learn once more uh, some of the details that they need to learn to be able to go out there and execute and make a contribution to the team. So hopefully we can get that accomplished with a lot of our players in the next five days. Coach, we saw Minka at both uh, safety and cornerback. Is, is there a place that you want to see him play? Uh, is, is there, I guess, a goal? 
No, there's not really a goal. I think the goal is is to get the best four guys, best five guys on the field and the best positions that will give us the best opportunity to have a chance to be successful in the back end. So um, Minka can play either place extremely well. Um, so based on how the other players develop, we'll probably determine to a large degree um, where he ends up playing. Come back over here with Mark. Yeah, when you have situations like Deshaun's, do you gather the team together again and give them another speech about, hey, this is why you shouldn't put yourself in these positions or deliver another uh, message to yeah, them? Yeah, always. Uh, you know, every opportunity that we have, whether it's somebody on our team or somebody somewhere else, um, we, we use every one of these as opportunities to teach and opportunities for the other people to learn um, all the time. I mean, we do it with former players doing good things. We do it with players doing good things. We do it with um, other people doing not so good things and making poor choices and decisions. You know, we're always trying to make the players aware of the consequences of good and bad behavior. Um, you know, Deshaun Hand's going to have to suffer the consequences of this. You know, I always say, you know, and and but. You know, really two critical words at the end of any draft report. All right, maybe the two most critical words in the whole deal. All right, so there are going to be a lot of buts that he has to live with because of this. All right, so he's going to get plenty of punishment. Um, we're just going to try to help him so he has a better chance to make better choices and decisions in the future. Come back over here with Michael. I just wonder what your thoughts were on the defensive line and depth you have there coming back. Well, I think there's obviously some talented players there that haven't played a lot. Uh, those guys are going to have to develop consistency and performance. Uh, I don't think we were one of the goals coming out of spring practices. We may need to make some improvement in consistency up front. I think the players have the capabilities of doing it. We had a lot of new faces there. Um, so it, this camp is going to be real critical for how those guys develop and um, the consistency that they can play with. I just wanted to ask you about the, the right side of the offensive line. Obviously, you know, you said coming out of spring there are four guys. What do you need to see from the guys you have for that fifth spot that, that you want to see them do? Well, we're, we're evaluating that guys every day, all right? We're, we're evaluating those four guys to make sure that they continue to improve and play well. Uh, and we're also going to evaluate some of the younger players who came in uh, as well as some of the guys that were there in the spring. And, um, you know, same thing as we're going to do in the secondary. What gives us the best opportunity to get the best five guys on the field uh, so we have the best opportunity to be successful up front? And, you know, that's way early to be determined, and we're, we're going to be evaluating those guys every day, and uh, it's, it's, it's a work in progress, and, you know, it's way too early to really tell. I mean, especially, you know, these practices where you don't have pads on, not, not, not the easiest way to evaluate defense, uh, defense of an offensive lineman. Okay. Come back over here with Chris Walsh. Just from the end of last year to now, uh, what's been the biggest improvement with Jalen, and what do you kind of want to see from him in camp? Well, the goal was stated many times before that we wanted to improve uh, his ability to be a more efficient, effective, confident passer. Uh, I think he's made tremendous strides in the spring. Uh, we're not allowed to watch a lot of what they do over the summer, uh, but based on his confidence, uh, the poise that he plays with out there in practice today, uh, I think there has been a lot of improvement in his knowledge and understanding and confidence, and uh, his leadership, is, um, his presence, all those things I think have – a real positive impact on the offensive team and the offensive players. And um, I, I, I think he's really improved as a passer. We're going to finish up right here with Dwayne. Coach, you opened up talking about discipline and guys being able to understand and take criticism well. Is that stressed even more this year because you got a lot of young guys that you might, you might be counting on? Well, no, look, we, we, we always stress that. I mean, I think if you're going to improve, you have to be able to self-assess. If you're going to improve, you have to be able to take 
you can call it criticism, you can call it constructive criticism, you could call it teaching. Um, you know, if I tell a player something, I'm trying to teach the guy. I'm not really trying to criticize him. I'm not trying to tear him down for what he did. I'm trying to help him so that he can do it better the next time. And we try to explain to every player that that's, that's what we're trying to do. Now, there's things that you can't tolerate, like lack of effort. That's a choice. Uh, not playing with toughness. That's a choice. Um, not knowing what to do. Uh, because you're not well prepared or you're not focused. Uh, I think some of those things you come down a little harder on. But when it comes to teaching players technique, teaching them how to do what you want them to do, that, that's not a critical deal. You know, that, that, that's, a, that's a teaching. Um, whether it's how you use your feet and hands, how you run a route, how you get your second step on the ground to make a block, uh, how you set your feet in the pocket to throw a ball. I mean, all, all these things are you know, things that you're trying to teach to improve guys so that they have a better chance to be successful. And I think the players know that the coaches are here to try to help them do that. And I think that's why they came here. Uh, and um, I don't ever get any negative feedback from players in terms of how they're coached. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.